By the end of this video, when we open up our menu, we'll have a new tab, which when we click on, will display our quest log. Our quest will have titles and different objectives with the required amount to complete and also our current progress. If we end up with lots of quests, we won't have to worry as we'll have a scrollable list. And no matter the amount of objectives, our UI will be able to shrink, react and expand. But before we check this out, if you're following along with the series, you're of course learning a lot about Unity. But to really grow as a developer, you of course need to go beyond just following tutorials. That's why I'm excited to be partnering with Brilliant. Brilliant is an interactive learning platform that helps you to master math, science, programming, data analysis, and AI through fun, hands-on lessons. Instead of just watching videos, you're actively learning by solving real problems, which makes it easier to remember and apply what you've learned. One of the great things about Brilliant is how it teaches you to think like a programmer. You'll learn how to break down complex problems, improve your logic, and actually understand how things work, all of which are incredibly useful when you're writing your own game systems or debugging tricky code. They also have their own mobile app, which is great if you want to squeeze in a lesson while commuting or on a break. Even just a few minutes a day can help build powerful habits. You can try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days by heading to the link in the description. And if you decide to keep going, you'll also get 20% off a full year of Brilliant Premium. It's a great way to keep building your skills alongside these tutorials. So thank you very much, Brilliant, and I hope you enjoy. But cool, let's get into some logic ourselves and add our new quest system to our game. So let's start off by designing our UI. In my hierarchy, I have my UI cam canvas, which if I open up, you can see we've got a deactivated menu. If I activate our menu, we can now open this up and see all our different pages and different tabs at the top. I'm going to add a new tab in here by clicking on inventory tab and pressing control D, which I'll now rename quest tab. We can open up this quest tab and change the text to say quest. And then back on the quest tab, down the bottom, we've got our event trigger. So when we click on our tab, it'll move us to our correct page. These numbers are the same as an array, so starts at zero. So player is zero, inventory is one, and quest will now be two. We'll go down to map tab and set this to be three, and settings tab to set this to be four. These will have to align with our pages. So let's go to pages, press control D on our inventory page. I'll rename this quest page and remove this grid layout group component because we won't be needing that. So now if we activate our quest page, you can see we've got a nice blank page to put our quest content on but our settings tab is gone missing and has been pushed off this bar. So let's click on our tabs game object. We'll set the spacing down to zero now as we need some more room and I'll set the cell size on the X to be 340 so that our tabs all fit along the top nicely. The inventory text is a bit too big so I'm just gonna change that down to 40 so it wasn't overlapping the side. Now we can also see we've got our tab controller script with all our different tabs and all our different pages slotted into here. Let's add one more on both and replace that map tab to now be our quest tab. And the same with the page, our quest page to replace our map page and then put our map tab and map page to be element number three. So these now all align with each other. So now if we press play, we can see we've got our new quest tab and when we click on it, we've got our blank page ready to set up. So cool, I'll close down our tabs and on our quest page so that we're able to scroll down when we have lots of quests, I'm gonna right click and go UI, scroll view. And I'll call this quest scroll view. If we open this up, we're automatically given some pieces. The bit we wanna look at is the viewport. This contains content. And in this content is where we're gonna build our quest UI. We can see in the middle of our screen, this looks quite small. So if you click on quest scroll view, double click on this to see it in your scene view and zoom out a bit. You can drag this to fit the size you want on your screen. I'll drag mine out, leaving a gap at the top. So maybe we can add some text. Cool, now let's click on our content, right click and go UI panel, which is going to be our quest entry. I'll right click on this quest entry, go UI and add text. And this will be our quest name, which I'll call quest name text. I'll set the color of this to black. I'll drag in the custom font we set up and I'll just change this to be quest name for now. Cool. I'll drag this up to the top. Cool. Now we're also going to want to right click on our quest entry and add a UI panel again for our objective list. So if you have multiple objectives in one quest, we'll be able to list them all out here. So right click on your objective list and we'll go UI text and we'll call this objective text. I'll once again type in objective text, make this black and pull in our custom font. Now you can see these are all bundled on top of each other. So let's get these to organize out in a dynamic way. If we click on content, we're going to want to add a vertical layout group. We can give a spacing of 10, then add another component called a content size fitter. We'll set vertical fit to be preferred size and then move on down to our quest entry. On our quest entry, we're gonna to want to add another vertical layout group. 
We won't want child force to expand on height, but we do want use child scale on height. And we'll add some padding in a bit later. For now, we'll add another component and we're gonna want another content size fitter for the vertical fit to be preferred size. Next, same on our objective list, we're gonna want a vertical layout group. Add a spacing of five. All these settings can stay the same and we'll add a content size fitter. Vertical fit, a preferred size. Cool, so now if we duplicate these quest entries, you can see these all space out. And if we add more objective text, this also spaces out automatically. So cool, obviously you can design this however you like, but to make these entries a bit prettier, I'm going into the Ninja Adventure asset pack, into the UI, then into theme, and we've got this nine path five PNG, which I'm gonna drag into our assets, bring into our sprites folder, and set this up in the inspector by setting the pixels per unit to be 16, filter mode to be point no filter and compression to be none. And I'll show you for now, click on our quest entry and drag this now in to be our quest entry's background image. It obviously doesn't look great. We could try stretching this out, but the sprite gets really weird. So to get a sprite stretching correctly, which I didn't know about, because you can see my background looks a bit warped and I'll probably fix that one too. If we click on our nine path image and change the mesh type from tight to full rect, then click apply and go to the sprite editor we can set up our borders. Now to do this, we basically want to say which bit to keep the same and which bit to be able to stretch. As this has this little orange fold on the piece of paper, I'm gonna make it so it's within this line and even around the outsides. So we've got this little square in the middle, which is gonna be the piece that stretches. So our border is 5655, five, five, just to avoid this little top bit. If we click apply now, click on our quest entry, and drag in this image again to the source image, we can now stretch this out to be the width we want and if we added more objectives, you'll see this grows. But obviously this still doesn't look right. We need a bit of padding around our text. So let's click on quest entry. And to get this to fit nicely, I used 50 on the left, zero on the right, 40 on the top and 50 on the bottom. Now this looks much nicer. And just as a personal preference, I'm gonna indent in our objective test by going to objective list and setting its left padding to be 50. Cool, let's press play. And if I open up our menu and go to our quest page, we can see our nice little quest entry. We can add some more quest entries. And we'll see our scroll bar is growing. So we can scroll down and see our other quests. This also works by clicking and dragging of your scroll wheel, but it is quite slow on the scroll wheel. Cool, now our UI is all set up. To get these entries populated with some quest data, we're going to need to add some classes. So that's what we'll be doing in our next episode, where we'll create a scriptable object for creating our different quests in our game, and then writing a quest UI controller script in our quest log. So very cool, very exciting. Like and subscribe so you don't miss out. As always, you can grab every script I've ever written on my Patreon, or so you don't have to put it together yourself. You can grab this whole template, including all finished features and any future updates for free. Otherwise, see you in the next one. Bye.